Welcome to MTDCNC. Today I'm going to be learning something about Manual Guide Eye from Robbie. We're here in Dudley, we're here at Beg Prosper. Robbie, first of all, what is Manual Guide Eye and what can you do with it, please? Uh, manual Guide makes it a lot easier to program anything. So on here we've got our options that we can, u that we can use for Manual Guide. So most of the time we we'll use fixed form. So on the fixed form, we've got all these things already laid out. So these are ones that I've typed up myself and they're saved in the machine. So these are almost like conf custom conversational macros. Sort of. Yeah, it's sort of like conversational. Um, so, for example, we've got a program start. So you just insert that into a program. You've got ones for turning tools, drilling cycles, thread cycles. We've got a macro for a tail stock and then another one for retract. We've also got our can cycles in there. So they're already pre-written out. So when we're doing stuff, when we want to turn anything, instead of typing out all the codes like your G71, putting in a cut size, you're literally just changing the question mark boxes, which makes it way easier. So rather than typing out all of these, you have to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values in, and that's it. That's it. I mean, you obviously have to put in your own values between the end numbers, because obviously that's what your can cycle's doing. But you've got your start position, the X and the Z, and then you follow on from there, and then you put your finish position in. Um, we've got another one for a tail stock advance. This is slightly different, taken from another machine that we, we tried on here that we still need to test. Uh, it's relatively new. So if someone is going to be using this, like this is a different screen to the standard, sorry, mind if I, to the different kind of standard program screen. Is it custom, custom two? Okay, yeah, custom two. Why would someone use manual guide over the standard interface that they're, they're, they're used to? Yeah. Well, see, a lot, of the, a lot of people don't really use the manual guide even though they've got the option, but it takes out that process of typing out every single figure. The more you type out, the more likely you are to make a mistake. That's, that's, the, that's the simple of it. So when we're going through the program, we've got our, get my fixed forms back up. So does this, save, this saves time as well? It does, it saves a lot of time. Because you don't have to think, oh, have I, have I missed that? You've got none of that rubbish in there. And also standardize the programs, because if, I don't know, if one person goes and programs something today, then someone else goes and programs a similar part tomorrow, it might have completely different Z retracts, Z retracts, X retracts. It's just, it's quite hard to, to go jump between those programs and know exactly what's happening. Exactly. And this can, you, this kind of standardizes it because it's already there. You're going to have the same kind of layout for everything. Um, we've also got, look, when you delve deeper into manual guide, you've got all your options. So this is, these are all the different cycles. You can do center drilling, drilling, tapping, reaming, boring. There's loads of different operations you can pick. Yeah, exactly. So obviously this just being a standard lathe, we've got all the basic turning operations. I mean, for example, turn if you were going to do an outer rough. You've got all these different options. So you've got this, obviously the direction you're going to cut in. You're going to go towards the chucks. So you're going to go minus. You've got your depth of cut. That would be in mils, not in microns. So you put Q3, three mil depth. Brilliant. And these, there's a really quite helpful diagram here yeah. showing you every single di dimension, almost like a 2D drawing of yeah. what you're going to be, what parameter you're choosing. And it even highlights which one you're on. So you can see there it's changing. So it tells you. So obviously that's the percentage of cut depth. Because before, for, for a long time, I guess, Fanuc was at the, the point where the control was really good, really good for five axis, really good controls for, for three axis and two axis yeah. lathes, but they still didn't quite have that conversational yeah. aspect to the control that loads of people would love out of the Herco Winmax, out of the Heinhein, out of the Siemens shop mill. But this is bringing that conversational yeah. ease of use to the Fanuc control. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, this, this sort of set, this com it's conversational, really. This conversational way of programming, it makes it a lot quicker. And also, when you've got complex parts, you can easily do them on here. I mean, you've even got this option, so that's your, your feed going in that direction. But say if you had a part with a wasting, you could even have a slower feed plunging in. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more pressure on the cut. Which this would be a nightmare to try and program by hand. Yeah, it would. So I mean, normally you'd have to do a G71 Type 2, where you put like an X and a Z on the same line on the first end number. So when you're doing that, you'd have to think to yourself like, where you're going to start it, how you're going to finish it. And some machines don't have Type 2. A lot of the older ones don't. So you would have to just do like a G75 like grooving cycle and it would just take forever. Whereas this, it will just do it for you. Brilliant, so what do you, how much time do you think this saves you on programming kind of a standard pot? You're doing a stud here. Yeah. On a standard pot, how much time would it save you? It saves you a lot of time because normally I would have to, like I said, I'd have to write out that whole program and I'd have to do one for each tool call. Whereas this, this gives me all my information. So when that's input into the program, it would give you everything you needed. And then it would give you another screen. Obviously this, I'm not gonna do it for this one. But then it go onto this, menu figure where you've got your standard turning so you select that you put in a start point sorry I'm just reaching across here so is this put is setting out the stock yeah so this this is your stock and then you literally follow your lines so you have to go you want it to go up you give it an end point to so say you want it to turn to 40 mil 
you just go 40 mil input. You've got connection types, so say if you had an arc or a tangent, well, we've got nothing, so it doesn't really matter. It's a part, okay. Then if you wanted to put another line going across, we do a little left up, because obviously that's the direction the tool's moving in. So we want to go to 42. So we want to go, the first line's gone to the bottom of the chamfer, second line's gone to the top of the chamfer. So there's, there's, there's so many different uh, uh, features to the manual guide eye that people don't necessarily know they even have. Brilliant, so if you've got a fan of control, check out if you've got a guide eye, Get in touch with Robbie, I'll give you his email address. You can ask him all the questions. Yeah. Um, no, I'm joking. But you can check out Game Manual Guide Eye, find out what options you've got. It might be saving you hours of programming time.